I don't know how many of you guys have heard of Boogie2988. I was first exposed to his videos where he plays this character named Francis. This is one of those videos. Don't hit. Francis, the neighbors are watching. And when I saw these, I like could not believe that this guy was real. Well, I looked into it and I learned like he came out later kind of saying that this is one of his caricature videos and that's not really who this guy is. But he is one of the more famous YouTubers being around for 10 years and having um, almost 4 million subscribers. You know those videos that you watch and they just get like stuck in your head and you can't get him out of your head. Well, recently he put out a video that was like that with me. And it was called The Truth About Why I'm So Fat. I've been big all my life. And uh, for the longest time I didn't care. For the longest time I just thought that's how it was and I wasn't gonna do anything about it. And I'd die early and I was happy with it. I grew up in an abusive family and an abusive home. The amount of pain that's in my head and my heart is immeasurable. I don't know why this is like so unique, but it is. It is a guy who's fat, he's overweight, he uses these terms himself, and he actually just says that um, in a way that's actually not beating himself up about it. It's awful. I feel like I'm dying. I feel like I'm going to die. I lose my breath. I lose my mind. I go crazy. I get angry. I get sad. I get depressed. I get everything. I get suicidal. I, I'm afraid it won't end. I'm afraid it will end. I'm afraid I'll end myself. It, once a day, twice a day, three times a day. One of the things that helps with that is food. It's one of the only things that help. And so when this happens, I'll eat. So what I love about this is he's using these descriptive words that help me understand myself. Because in a way what he's saying is so obvious. It's like not a uh, rocket science, but in a way what I found with myself is that when I'm in these moments where I'm out of control, I'm not self-aware to know what's going on. Um, you know, I used to think about my addiction stuff as like I'm in a first person shooter and I can only see like what's in front of me. I'm like, oh, that, I want it, that'll help me. And it wasn't until later on in my life that I started really working with addiction for a long time that I started, I started to be able to step out of that and I almost saw myself as a character and I could say, oh, well, you're heading for this cliff and it's gonna be fun for five minutes but then you're gonna fall off. Maybe you shouldn't do that. Or, you know, I was able to see, step back. And that's, I think, what is really valuable about what he's doing. And he's also showing that food is not the only problem here, that, that food is kind of the symptom, and that that's the medication that he turns to, but that these other issues is what's taking him kind of to use the food in the way he's using it, or maybe even abuse the food. I don't know if he would use that term. We had a lot of success at first, four years ago, when I first really, really dug deep into me to find all the strength I had. We did a low-carb, ketogenic diet for six months, and uh, I rocked it, man. I did. I, 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 it was more successful than I'd ever been. I was doing well with my wife, I was doing well with YouTube, and I was doing well with that. We were exercising too, which was a big, big part of it. But in six months, I lost 67 pounds, and that was amazing. To me, this is the most normal part of his video. He's talking about successes, and how hard he's trying, and how much he's accomplished. And this is really cool, because um, I can relate to some of those things. I've had accomplishments, I've had successes, I've made it certain distances on using willpower or using other tools. I don't know, th this part feels good, right? Like you're, you're rooting for him. 
but there's still kind of a problem because he's still fat. But this is where the video gets really interesting in my opinion. But as you can imagine, the PTSD, the anxiety, the fear, the terror, off the charts, man. Fear of my own life, fear of being stuck in that bed, fear of never walking right again, fear of never being able to live the life that I deserve or that my wife deserves for me to live. And of course I ate, I ate, I ate, I ate, I ate, I ate. I put on uh, about 50 of the pounds of the 67 I lost back. And this is where I'm really blown away. And I don't really know why I'm blown away because this type of phenomenon is common on the internet. In fact, it's really popular, especially with um, a guy like this. In fact, I think it's why he is so popular. It's this type of honesty, this type of introspection. It's not his camera work or special effects that draws people to him. This is my question though. Why can't Christians or religious folks or church people talk this way? And I'm, ask, I'm saying this because I grew up in these areas. So, you know, I, I know what it's like. And no one ever shared sin or struggles or difficulties using two things, using details and using present tense. It was always talked about as like, oh, I had this problem and then I became a Christian and now I don't have this problem anymore. And it could be sex, it could be shopping, it could be divorce or lust or food or stealing or drugs, you name it. But the impression that I got growing up was that Jesus or Christianity or religion or church was supposed to make me not struggle anymore. But I don't think that was real, and that's not what Boogie2988 has experienced at all with his weight loss. And with most of my problems, it's not at all what I experienced. And I always thought that something was wrong with me, that I was like not doing the formula right, or I hadn't really accepted Jesus or his power into my life. But man, I tried. And I sense with him that he tried. I'm still making progress, man. I never give up. I never give up. I will never give up. And now what I more feel like is going on with these places and environments that I grew up in, it's not that people um, succeeded and then I didn't, but it's actually that people succeeded and struggled and they don't talk about the struggle. They only talk about the successes. And if they talk about a struggle in this environment, you have to talk about it past tense. Um, otherwise, it's like you don't really believe the thing. You don't believe in God's power or something weird like that. But I believe in God's power, but I don't believe his power is supposed to take us away from all struggle. But when I read about like some stuff that Paul says in Romans about like, you know, there's these famous passages about I don't do what I set out to do and I can't control myself. And, you know, and this is like the hero of the Christian faith in a way. I mean, besides Jesus, like this guy wrote a good portion of the Bible. It makes it sound like the struggle is supposed to be present tense. Or if we don't see it that way, that maybe our way of looking at God or Jesus or ourselves is off. It's broken. It's not accurate. And that's what I came to see about myself. And it's for reasons like that, that people like Boogie2988 are actually my hero far more than some of these Christians who speak from these lofty places and appear to have everything together. Now, maybe they do. I'm, I'm sure a few of them do, <clears throat> but I don't. And they, when they speak to me, I can't relate to that. Um, and maybe I've come to learn more than I realized. Most of it's actually not true. And this stuff does catch up with almost everyone. Let's do paleo. Let's do a vegan diet. But all of this is symptoms, uh, different versions of one thing. Calorie restriction, which is what it takes. You have to restrict your calories. Diet is 90% of it. You have to eat less calories than you burn. I understand that. I know that. I do that. I try. These different diets that I try are just means to doing that.
We all have our diets and our hacks and our different things that we do to accomplish our goals. But either our goals are so small that we accomplish them easy, which means they're the wrong goals, I think, or we fail in some way, shape, or form. And, and I'm learning to be okay with that. I'm learning to be okay with who I am right now which is a failure in a lot of ways. Um, I'm not the dad I wanna be. I'm not the husband I ought to be. I'm not the friend I thought I was. I'm not the writer or author or YouTuber that I imagine I, I can be. And that's okay, I think. Well, let's define okay. I mean, okay, what I mean when I say okay is that God loves me and accepts me on those terms right now. I don't have to become a good father for him to accept me or a good YouTuber or a good author or a good father. And that is that is everything, you guys. There's Everything else is like less than that. That's like the mothership. If you are accepted by God, then making a few bucks or being accepted by a human or having your dad be proud of you, those are nice things. But but if God accepts you, nothing else really matters. I still try. I do everything I can every single fucking day. Sometimes I eat food while I'm crying. Sometimes I hide food. Sometimes I buy a food and then throw it away, and then dig it out of the trash and eat it while crying about it. And I try to stop. I try to not do it. I try. And this, like this, 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 this is what I need more of in my life. Is more people helping me not to recite these mindless mantras, um, like brainwashing type stuff, like, oh, you're a good enough person. Or, oh, God loves us. Or, oh, like, nobody's perfect. Like, I need people to help me see the truth of who I am because it actually helps me to see how big and powerful God's love actually is. And this type of sharing that he's talking about, the depths of talking about going to the trash can, and we all have our trash cans. I have my trash cans. I've done that stuff where I've sworn off behaviors and, and porn and masturbation and um, eating certain things and setting certain goals a bazillion times, and I failed. That's part of who I am. I, I, I think that's what it means to be human. And in fact, I think it's one of the few things that actually uh, makes me, that Boogie2988 and I have in common, and that I have in common with you. But the problem is, when we hide those things and we try and bind together by our successes, it makes it so that you and I don't have anything in common because you see our life and you see the, the things that we have. Maybe it's the kids or the money or the lifestyle that you want, certain parts. And then you're like, oh crap, I could never have that. Um, and then I see his life, the good things, and I see these certain heroes that I have, the good things, like, oh, he's an Olympian, he's this and that. And I could never have those things. But you know what? Deep down on the most important level, we're all the same. We all struggle. We all need God the same. And God extends, I believe God extends his love to us the same. And that's the big tragedy here, I think, <clears throat> um, with how I grew up in these religious environments. It's actually that when we are keeping secrets, we are believing that God's love won't cover those areas of our life. That's the simple truth of it. And we were taught that, and we believe it, and we're teaching it to our kids by not sharing uh, their keeping secrets, and we're not sharing our secrets. And we're all, it's, a, it's the biggest sermon we could ever preach, and no one even knows we're preaching it. And we're saying, hey, God loves you um, for as long as you're good. That's the sermon. And, and I don't believe, that's not what we believe. We don't believe that God loves you as long as you're good. And I've heard people say that, like, with their mouth, but actually our life uh, says something altogether different. 
I'm really thankful because I go to meetings twice a week really for this reason, to hear people like him share stuff like this about their life right now, not 20 years ago before they bought a Bible. I want to know that I'm not alone, and I've learned that I'm not. Um, and, and I need reminders all the time about where I really am at, and I think it's better for me to be desperate, um, even if I err on the side of being too desperate, than to be like satisfied and judgmental. Uh, desperation is better. Um, <clears throat> so I just wanted to share three things that I've learned. The first is to confess, like anyone, anything, um, as long as it's a real person, you know, like just start talking about the real stuff that you're going through right now. You can put it in the comments below. You can, I, I don't think it should be anonymous because I think it needs to have power. You could do it with your spouse. Um, you could do it with a mentor in your life or a friend, but just say, hey, you know what? Like I've never told anyone this thing, but I sneak food or I go on Facebook when my boss isn't looking or I steal paper clips or whatever the hell it is. It just doesn't matter. But confessing breaks power and it will, you'll be surprised how much, um, you know, you think that it's like this really like, like a spanking, like it sucks, like, but you'll be surprised how much freedom you feel. I think when you see that God in fact does love you in those areas. And that's how we come to believe that. Number two is when people confess to us, and I would say, especially our kids, just listen, you know, the church, the reason why no one confessed in my pink up is, is I say, oh, I, um, you know, I look at porn and people had a solution for it every time. But it was a weak solution. It never worked for me. But but people want to fix me. And they want to say, oh, well, let me pray for you. or And they mean well. Here's a Bible verse. Or maybe you don't believe this or this and that. But, you know, part of accepting people is just accepting where they lie right now. And when our kids come to us especially, I think it's there's this tendency to want to fix it and to offer a solution. And I think there, that's important, but that's a separate time and a place for that. There's that lesson, the lesson that morality is important. But there's another lesson, which is we understand you are not alone. We accept you right now. And the third thing is, uh, for you religious folks, um, if you're like me, stop saying shit like, well, um, even I'm not perfect, um, or I still struggle. These like vague terms that allude to like, as if we might be perfect or should be perfect or as if that's the expectation. It's not helpful to anyone else out there and I don't think it's helpful to us. You know, um, Paul said like, I'm the worst. That's what he said. He didn't say like, well, you know, even I'm not like quite a hundred percent. And I, I just don't think that way of thinking has ever done me any favor. So I hope that helps. Um, I'm going to put the link to his video below if you guys want to check that out. Um, this is just something I am so passionate about and for you guys who watch this vlog and have dedicated the time, if you want to understand kind of some of the, what you see around here, it, these beliefs have really changed us and we've got a lot of freedom from these areas, really outside the church, unfortunately. Um, that's it. See you guys. This video is not a regular vlog post because traveling last week kind of messed up our filming schedule because we took a day off, so we needed to film an extra episode. And I wanted to talk about this video anyway, so tomorrow we'll be more back to normal-ish. But we wanted to take a moment and say thank you, thank you, thank you to those of you who have supported us on Patreon. 17 people have donated money to this cause and our ability to kind of share this message. And it really does mean a lot to us, you guys. Um, we don't have a lot of contact with the viewers and ways of knowing and seeing money in our bank account is a concrete way of connecting us with you. 
If you want to support uh, this message and us because you've got something from it, I'm going to put a link below to the Patreon page. We really appreciate you guys even considering that. And if you're not interested, keep on enjoying the videos. Thank you, guys.